How we found a white dwarf star, a stellar corpse, by accident. This is on The Conversation, written by scientist author John Horner, professor astrophysics at the University of Southern Queensland in Australia, and Stephen Kane, associate professor at University of California, Riverside. A recap concerning white dwarf stars. A massive white dwarf before of a collapse of a star, gravitational wave emission can lead to the coalescence of close pairs of compact ob objects, uh, objects orbiting each other. In the case of neutron stars, mergers may yield massive above the tolman oppenheimer volkoff limit, leading to formation of black holes. But for white dwarfs, the mass of the merger product may exceed the limit leading either to a thermonuclear explosion type of a A1 supernova or to a collapse forming a neutron star. The latter case is expected to result in a hydrogen and helium-free circumstellar nebula and a hot luminous rapid rotation highly magnetized central star with a lifetime of about only 10,000 years. And there's reports observed of a hot star with a spectrum dominated by emission lines, which is located at the center of the circular mid-infrared nebula. That's just a little bit of it. Now, this is what the um, conversation article says. One of the great things about science is that when you start to observe a new object in space, you can never be sure quite what you'll find. We received a fantastic reminder of this during observations designed to check whether nearby stars had planetary companions. Our observations confirmed the discovery of a couple of planets, but also yielded an unexpected surprise. Buried among our candidates was this corpse of a star, a white dwarf, a discovery we announced this month in the Astrophysical Journal. In search for stellar wobbles, our story begins with a, series, a survey called the Anglo-Australian Planet Search, AAPS. We spent 17 years looking for alien worlds using a 3.9 meter Anglo-Australian telescope at Siding Spring Observatory in New South Wales. We often say a planet orbits a star, just like our Earth or, or orbits our sun, for example, but the truth is slightly more complicated. Instead, the two orbit around other common centers of mass, as a result, a star that hosts a planet will wobble, rocking back and forth over time. Radial velocity surveys search for planets by attempting to detect that telltale wobble. Over its lifetime, the AAPS discovered more than 40 planets in this manner. But it is almost certain that more planets remained undiscovered in the AAPS data, so we began searching for those hidden worlds. In several cases, we found stars that exhibited distinct signs of a wobble, but for which less than a full orbit had been completed. Without observing a full orbit, we did not know whether the companions caused the wobble on our planets, on the, uh, the wobble our planets, or if there are other stars. So how can we work out what we found? Direct imaging is a new trick. We identified 21 stars around which were, there could be a planet, but to be sure we needed more data. Unfortunately, the AAPS had ended, so we needed to do something innovative. For each of our stars, there were two possibilities. Either the wobble is caused by a planet or by something bigger, such as a brown dwarf or an unseen stellar companion. And let me just, before I forget, comment here that a couple of years ago, NASA had informed us, made an announcement, that they had in fact found a brown dwarf star at the edge of our solar system. Okay, that's something very important and significant that we should know. And uh, that, uh, that could be what is uh, causing the perturbations in the uh, orbits of the planets, the, gig the gigantic planets, the uh, outer edge of our solar system. Now, recent advances in astronomical imaging techniques 
mean we can now use the world's largest telescopes to look at nearby stars and see objects very close to them, closer than has ever been possible before. We need to use the, uh, they said we use the 8.1 meter Gemini South Telescope in Chile to obtain high resolution images of our target stars to see whether we could see any previous hidden companions. Despite the power of the technique, any planets around our targets would remain invisible, but if the observed wobbles were caused by more massive objects, we should be able to see those objects and hence rule out the planetary hypothesis. The peculiar case of HD 118473. For 20 of our targets, things went as we expected. In some cases, we detected a previously undiscovered stellar companion. In others, we could rule out massive companions, given a, giving us confidence in the presence of planets around those stars. But for one star, things got very weird. On the basis of the wobble data, we knew that the lowest possible mass the companion could have is around 0.44 times the mass of the Sun. That's much too massive to be a planet. With that much mass, we would expect the companion to be a star, fainter and cooler than the Sun, but easily visible with Gemini South. But when we looked at our images, no companion star was visible. Then we found a macabre twist. The, uh, the radial velocity data is clear. There is a massive companion orbiting HD 118473, causing the star to wobble back and forth with a period of 5.67 years. But it can't be a planet. It's far too massive. And it can't be a star. We'd be able to see it. So what could it be? The answer comes down to the way stars live and die. Vast as stars are, their supply of fuel is not unlimited. Eventually the fuel runs out, and the end of the star's life is imminent. The more massive the star, the more spectacular that end will be. A star like the Sun, our Sun, will eventually swell to become a red giant. Then will puff out off its outer layers, creating a spectacular planetary nebula, and leave behind a glowing ember, its core, bare and exposed to space. That core is a white dwarf, around the size of Earth, but with the mass of a star. Tiny compared with the star from which it came, the white dwarf gradually cools and fades to obscurity over billions of years. More massive stars die violently as supernova that outshine whole galaxies, but they also leave behind corpses that are faint and hard to spot. Neutron stars the size of a city, but with a mass greater than the sun, and black holes, tiny and invisible except when they are devouring something. All this brings us back to our hidden companion, HD 118473. The mass of a star, but too faint to see, so what could it be? An unexpected ancient relic. By far the most likely answer is that the hidden companion is a white dwarf. In the distant past, HD 118473 was a binary star with the two companions shining bright as they orbited their companion center of mass. For a few billion years, nothing changed until the more massive of the stars reached the end of its life. It swelled to become a red giant, then shed its outer layers, leaving behind a white dwarf, too dim for us to detect. The white dwarf's companions continues through space as we, as we speak, still whirling in a, a celestial waltz with what remains of its companion, a dim hidden relic to deceive exoplanet hunters, and a reminder of how science always has another surprise waiting around the corner. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media.
These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.